firstly, thanks to the audience for, 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 for taking the time to join the session. Um, I know uh, the world that we live in today as per the topic is a very busy world. Um, so a little bit about me, um, I actually started life in accounting and finance um, and was very lucky to fall into the IT sector almost by mistake, uh, early 2000s. Um, I then worked across manufacturing, insurance, banking, um, mining, engineering, and then uh, as Vinnie shared, um, the last almost two decades I've been in, in professional services and in, in, in particular in, in legal. Um, and it's an exciting place to be. I know um, everyone's going through transformation at the moment, but the legal sector had been stale for a really long time. Um, and it's nice to be at the pointy end of, of leading this change in, in not just at this firm, but in the sector more broadly. Um, a little bit about Minter Ellison. So Minter Ellison, what do we do? Um, we are uh, the largest law firm in the APAC region. Uh, there's close to 3000 people at Minter's. We have around uh, 13 offices uh, around the globe, headquartered in Australia, which is lovely. So not too many late night calls or early morning calls. Um, we practice all types of law in the commercial space. So we don't touch family law and criminal law. That stuff's a little bit too contentious, but we do everything else, M&A, um, disputes, uh, infrastructure, real estate, finance, workplace law, and the list sort of goes on. We're almost 200 years old as a law firm. So again, very traditional roots. Um, but recently, um, over the last five years, we took a great risk and we started pivoting the business into general consulting. So outside of the legal um, sphere. So whilst we're a law firm at heart, we now do work in IT consultancy. We acquired a large IT consultancy in Australia a few years ago. We do work in the risk and reg space, executive remuneration space. Uh, we've got a, a, a full contract lawyer business called Flex as well. So it's exciting to be part of a firm that is trying to break the mold and trying to break uh, tradition. And, and that's actually helped me with driving um, a lot of the changes in digital because there is a sense of openness across it. So what will you walk away with today? Um, I hope you'll walk away with a few things. The first is really starting to understand how to leverage VUCA, the, the crazy uncertain in our world, to strengthen your team um, and, and, and strengthen the positive impact that they can make uh, on your organization. Um, I'll, I will share how we built more capacity through a crisis. So looking at some of the competitors, you know, rather than shrinking, we actually grew uh, in size, um, but we also grew in capacity and that's really important, right? So actually doing the most with the headcount that we have. So, so actually starting to get more capacity out of what was already quite a stretched team. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about our journey to get there. It'll be pretty high level given we, we only have around 20 minutes. Um, and then I'll share just a couple of key lessons learned as well. Um, but I wanted to run a super quick exercise around VUCA. So VUCA, um, for those who don't know, was a term that I think was brought to life in the late 80s by the, uh, the, the, the US military. Uh, it talks, of course, about volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity uh, in the world that we're living in today. Sorry. So, sorry, can you guys hear me okay? I'm getting a bit of feedback, but just wanna check it's all okay. Yeah, we can hear you fine. Good, good, good. Um, and so whilst this term came from the military, really the world we're living in today, it's entirely pervasive. And I think 2020 um, really helped us better understand that, uh, that things are gonna become more and more complex. I did wanna try run a little exercise here using the chat function, um, uh, which is just, just inviting everyone to put in um, uh, just a couple of words, what VUCA means to your organization at the moment. Um, and, and uh, you know, whether around volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity, what are the themes that you're seeing around VUCA at your organization? So obviously COVID and the pandemic is an obvious one, but there's lots of other things. So if you wouldn't mind adding into the chat and maybe I'll call a few out. Now, Richard, I cannot see the chat um, for whatever reason, but um, <laughs> perhaps you can call a few out for me if you wouldn't yeah, mind. Yeah, I can call out a few. Uh, so from Lani, we had disruption. Uh, I wrote that uh, my organization, we're needing to pivot a lot. Uh, John Allen, 
uh, noted uh, employee retention. Um, uh, I think that's Evan, Business Agility Institute, Housing Market in Perth is definitely VUCA. Oh, maybe that's... Yes. Uh, <laughs> the housing Kill. market in Australia is VUCA, I think. Yep. Yeah. Coquill and Reorg. Uh, Vinny, agree with the Perth housing market. Lani, hybrid working. So all of those, and then you've got things like cyber risk and keeping up with consumerization. You know, the list goes on and on and on. And I think um, we in our careers are going through an extreme phase of this. And hopefully I always worry about my kids that things have settled to some extent, um, but we're living through it. So let's talk more about it. Um, so wh why did we want to um, look at ourselves and, 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 and look at what was going on in, in, um, in terms of VUCA? Um, and, and what was sort of the, the necessities around driving some change? Um, so, you know, I think even before COVID, um, your digital teams, not just the, the team here at Minters, um, were already being put at the centre uh, of enabling the majority of the firm's strategic goals or your organization, organization's goals. I certainly hope that's the case. If we look at 2010, earlier than 2010, still very much a back office operation, uh, you know, look at making sure PCs turn on and there's phones on desks and that sort of thing to really being the strategic enabler. So very important already, the pressure was relentless, right, for digital and for IT. But then, as I said earlier, 2020 took the paradigm to the next level, uh, where digital transformation was absolutely thrusted into the spotlight in all organisations. When I think about my kids' school, you know, my kids had to do homeschooling for six, seven months. Um, they had to enable new tools and they had to enable things like Zoom and they had to get their teachers to understand, some of them who are quite old, to understand how all these technology technologies worked. And then the same across the largest multinationals, you know, it was everywhere. But we needed to find a way at Mintus to run a more feasible operation that aligned with three key pillars in my view. The first was the firm's operational priorities. The second was the firm's strategic goals. And the third, just as important, was actually creating a sustainable workplace for my team, who were burning, burning uh, through the start, through, through 2019, 2018, and then through the start of 2020, with the weight of deliverables, deliverables again, driven a lot through this VUCA. So uh, what did we do? And how did we, how did we go about it? Um, you know, look, rather than um, looking at too many of the external things, which, you know, we're, we're entirely out of our control. Um, you know, things like the board and the executive's priorities, you know, very much outside of our control. Some influence perhaps, but mainly outside of our control. The pace of the market externally, again, VUCA driven, um, the uncertainty and what's next, what's around the next corner. We, we instead looked inwards, we looked at ourselves and we thought, is there a better way to, to, to be able to deal with this uncertainty, to deal with the constant change? Um, in, particularly in the terms of the way we can enhance the, the, the way we deliver uh, to the firm and the way we execute. Um, you know, like much of, of the legal industry, still very traditional IT setup, you know, with your typical silos of infrastructure and applications and projects, et cetera. Um, and I knew we had to start flipping this thinking and sort of swimming against the, the current um, to, to, to change things up. So about 12 months ago, or maybe a little bit longer than 12 months now, 14 or so months ago, um, we started exploring the merits of adopting agile, agile principles, of which there was really nothing in the organization. You had a few developers who knew a bit about agile, uh, a couple of project managers, but that was it. So the, the goal was to start with, with digital, with my team, IT. Um, we had no expertise, as I said. We quickly partnered up with uh, PMP, an organization here in Australia, um, led by uh, Marcus Ward, uh, who, who's based here in our region. Um, so we brought in some deep expertise to, to really help us understand um, the opportunities. Um, but th the first need for me was actually to get my leaders, uh, my senior leadership team to actually believe in the vision and believe in the concept. Um, and they were already at their wits end with the amount of work and the load and, and the tension that was starting to form between the teams because of the load. So we worked with them and then what we did is we broadened that circle out 
um, slowly but surely um, to the point that we had all 150 people uh, in the in the digital team ultimately involved in both a series of 101 workshops. So, so what is this and what is this concept and how can it help us? And, and to be honest, there was cynicism immediately, right? We don't need to change anything. This is just another thing to do, another thing to worry about. Um, but then what we did next, um, which, which Marcus very ably led with the leadership team was a series of workshops. So everyone got involved. There was real skin in the game. And it was really at that point that, that people started seeing the benefits um, for themselves. You know, what's in it for me? And I think, you know, that's, that's always where people start. And then it's sort of what's in it for the team and the organization. Um, we then moved on to create a series of champions uh, inside the teams. Um, and more recently have, um, have also put in an internal agile co coach, a new role internally for someone to step into, which is a great, uh, great opportunity. And actually what we saw, which we probably didn't expect, uh, which, which, was, which was just brilliant, is that the good word started spreading because of course, as we started setting up agile teams, we brought our customers into the agile cycle of development and we had product owners who were sitting outside of digital really for the first time. And so they were getting a taste of this and we started seeing uh, a lot of um, interest from, from our stakeholders who actually wanted to understand how they could start leveraging Agile within their team. So it fairly quickly has actually spread outside of digital and into some of the operational groups like finance, um, the broader PMO, our, um, our marketing team. So that was a, that was a nice sign that uh, we were starting to create a, a sense of success around the place. Um, but what we, what we also saw, which was entirely unexpected, is our lawyers, who are ultimately our customers in many instances, and even our clients, um, you know, where we generate revenue from, uh, we're starting to show interest in this again. Um, and so, you know, we've set up 101 sessions uh, with, with both our lawyers, so we do lunch and learn sessions, and we're now even helping some of our clients with their own internal processes um, and, and uh, agile methodologies to improve the way that they actually do work in this very uncertain, volatile and fast moving world. All right, um, so last slide um, is just about focusing on, on some of the highlights and also a couple of the lessons learned, which I, I wanna share with you. So um, the top six is sort of what I pulled out in terms of the highlights. First is, 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 is the key, uh, uh, key objective, which was you know, improving the speed of deliver, delivery to both our clients and our customers and the quality of our delivery. Um, the second was um, really greatly improved communications and collaboration within uh, digital and the broader firm. Um, the third was improved clarity on goals and timelines, so using sprints and stand-ups. Um, this one's really important. The team were feeling more in control of their destiny, uh, which, which I love, right? Before, they were just being given tasks and really didn't feel very empowered. I come in, I do my task, get on to the next task. Um, so they're feeling really in control of their destiny, you know, running sprints. And um, uh, we, we have our, our project managers now who use Kanbans. It's, it's much more sustainable. Um, the next one as well relates to our people. They were burning left, right, and centre. Uh, there's no more tedious meetings. There's clearer deliverables. And um, despite things only getting busier, they are genuinely happier um, with the way things are being run at the moment. Um, and then another nice one, which, which wasn't really part of our deliverables, is the IT brand has amped up across the firm. It's amped up um, in the client space as well, which, which is a really nice side, side effect. Uh, and then in terms of lessons learned, yes, there were a lot, but I'll share, I'll share that just, just the top two. I think the first one is when we, when we first discussed things as a leadership team, we were, how do we do this? We've got to do a, structure, a restructure. It's a bit of a big bang. Thankfully, we met with PMP. Uh, we had some sense talked into us again, coming from a little experience in the agile space. And it was actually, let's be iterative. Let's build some success stories. Let's start in some areas where um, we can see there'll be some clear wins. Uh, so small, steady increments. We're only 12 months in. We've still got at least six months, I think, to still embed more of this across the groups. Um, and then it will require ongoing um, focus and discipline, uh, which, which uh, you know, in other words, it never ends. It will continue to need focus if we want to continue to perform in this way. 
And then the last point I wanted to share is the toughest stakeholders are not your board and the exec. Yes, they wanted faster delivery in this brave new world. Uh, they wanted high quality delivery. They wanted better communication. Um, but they didn't really care how we got there. Um, they just said, just sort of sort it out. Um, but it actually was convincing our team that this was the right thing to do. And that means, you know, convincing your team that they need to learn new things, new processes, new concepts, new ways of doing things. And the toughest part, which we're still finding, uh, admittedly, is unlearning. So unlearning the old ways. So if I don't have my agile coach sitting in the start of new project meetings, they start falling back to the old way of doing things. As soon as they hear about the new ways and they're reminded, everything's beautiful and, and we keep going in, in, in this, new, uh, this new direction. So I think I'm probably right about out of time. I, 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 yep, perfect. I just saw Vinny there. Um, so again, I'll, I'll thank you for the time and thank you for joining this session. Uh, I hope it's been useful. I hope there were some nice takeaways. <laughs>